Two undervalued stocks to consider in March of 2024. This is a series that I started last year, and you guys enjoy watching it. You enjoy the picks and the things I talk about. Well, in this one, I have something a little bit special. I'm going to talk about more than two stocks here in the video. One of them I think you guys are going to like. It's more of a small micro cap kind of stock. The second one is more of a larger company. And the third one is a little bit high risk, kind of high reward setup. And I'm going to share some things here in the video that maybe you never heard of before and very few people talk about them on YouTube or on Twitter or anywhere in general. It's kind of like a strategy that I have. It's gonna be very interesting and I think you will enjoy it. And if you do enjoy it, all I ask, if you could please press the like button, leave a comment, whatever you say, it's a good thing, bad thing, whatever you have, just put it down in the comments. I will you know, read it and I will reply to you. Okay, now the first stock I'm going to talk about before I get into the whole thing, and this is a stock I talked about in January, which was in the two dividend stocks to consider video. It was around $8, now it's sitting at $11. Now before you skip the video, um, you're going to look at this stock and say, oh, it's sitting at all-time high or 52-week high, therefore the stock is not a buy. Well, yes, it's just a very high level. But if you look at it, this stock, even though it moved so much, it's still trading at a 9% free cash flow yield. That's growing free cash flow per share 49% and paying like a 5% monthly dividend. And it's only a $200 million company with so much gross potential. And you might think about it, I'm like, this is crazy. But when I talked about it, it was at 11% or 11.5% free cash flow yield and like a 6% monthly dividend. Now the free cash flow yield is 8.9% or 9% free cash flow yield, growing free cash flow per share 49%. So yes, it might seem like it's expensive on the charts, but the valuation keeps getting better. And it's extremely undervalued, in my opinion. And you might ask yourself, how is this even possible? How could a stock go up so much and still be so undervalued? And this is when I talked about it. A lot of people told me this has to be a scam. Because an 11% free cash flow yield growing 49% is just impossible. It doesn't happen. It can't be. And, and maybe you're right. Maybe this is what people thought. But the thing is that there's only a few places you're going to find these opportunities. And it's not going to be in the NASDAQ. It's not going to be in the S&P 500. It's not going to be in the Dow. It's not going to be in some kind of a major index. And this is mainly in the TSX Ventures in Canada, even some of them in the UK. This is where I've been finding my microcap stocks. Now, this chart is just ugly. It's horrible. But there's a lot of gems in this index. And one of them is decisive dividend. And another reason why the stock has gone up such a parabolic move after I talked about it, it was around $8, now sitting at 11 The main reason it made such a move is because funds in Canada, and this is some, something someone posted and I saw it before in many different places, but this is something in Canada where funds, most funds, they really don't get into stocks unless they get above 100 to 150 million market cap. Some of them, they cannot even buy them below 100 million market cap. Now, when I talked about the decisive dividend, it was sitting at 120, 130 million market cap. Now it's above 200 million. Now, because it's above 200 million, 16% of institutional owners will most likely be buying decisive dividend. Once it crosses 600 million, over 53% of institutions will be able to buy a stock like decisive dividend. So the market cap right now is 220, it was 150. And once it crossed around 150, 160, this is when a lot of the funds could buy it. And this is why it caused a massive, massive move to the upside because the company did report some earnings, but it was not anything crazy, but it still made a massive, massive move. And this is mainly because of inflows. And this is the whole trick with what I'm trying to do within my own micro caps, I try to find them below a hundred million market cap. And once they cross the hundred million market cap, you will likely see massive, massive moves to the upside. This is another one you can research. It's AEP, Atlas Engineer Products. It's sitting at a 91 million market cap. And this is another stock that I have. Now wait, you see what happens. Once the stock crosses 100 million or 150 million market cap, you're gonna have massive, massive inflows and you could potentially have some kind of a move like decisive dividend to close the valuation gap. And even though decisive dividend right now, it's still extremely, extremely undervalued at a 9% free cash flow yield. And this is mainly because it's not big enough for institutions to buy it. And this is the whole thing I've been working on and the whole edge I've been trying to develop. Now I'm giving you something very small for Atlas Engineer Products. It's mainly a construction company in Canada, so they do a lot of the wood trusses for housing, and they have a housing problem over there. You can see this chart on the deficit. The deficit is extremely negative. The only way to fix housing prices is to, is to build more homes, and the government and a lot of the local governments have been giving billions of dollars in incentives for construction, and this is a 
to me, it's like a, one of the most obvious investments I've ever seen over the last few years. And I'm invested in this company. I'm looking for different investments in Canada. And this is mainly why my portfolio is up 25.7% year to date. I share everything with you. I shared a video in 2022 talking about my year to date return. I shared it in 2023. And now I'm sharing it right now in 2024. And this is mainly because these micro caps are finally starting to play out. AEP, I'm up 40% on it. Decisive dividend, I'm up 45% on it in like two or three months. And I bought the stock in December. And this is just what happened. And it's been uh, crazy. So I hope you learned something you didn't know here in the video. But the first stock that I'm going to go deeper into that's still extremely undervalued is Decisive Dividend. And this is a company they mainly do a lot of acquisitions. The good thing about it is they have over a 10.2% insider ownership. It's the same thing with AEP. 11% of the company is owned by the CEO. And this is something you have to look into and they have to have some kind of a skin in the game. 10.2%. This is pretty amazing for the company. As I said, they do a lot of acquisitions all around the world, which is important because the TAM is pretty much unlimited. They can keep doing these acquisitions and very boring industries like woods and gas stoves, you know, some kind of machine equipment and machine maintenance, you know, some parts, agricultural, industrial, merchandising. And it's like in very niche markets, leaders in niche markets, they buy them at two, three, four times free cash flow and uh, they grow organically and they keep doing the acquisitions and they issue the dividend. It's a pretty amazing business model and it's been working for them so far. And this is why I talk about it because it's 200 million Canadian market cap. Now, I don't see why it cannot be a $2 billion market market cap within 10 or 12 years, maybe before that, if they keep doing the acquisitions, I don't see why it cannot become a $2 billion market cap. There's no reason why. Now, in terms of the growth for the company, it's growing free cash flow per share 49% over the last three months. And for 2023 so far, it has grown around 46% free cash flow per share. Pretty amazing. Now, the main reason I pay attention to free cash flow per share is because this company has been, you know, kind of diluting stock a lot. If you look at the shares outstanding, they were 12 million shares in 2021. Now they are 19 or pretty close to 20 million shares as of September of 2023. And this is mainly because their model is to use the free cash flow and then issue some shares and then do more acquisitions and create more value on a per share basis. And this is why I'm focusing on per share metrics. Now, normally dilution is very bad, but if the company can create more on a per share basis than it had before, then and it's a net benefit to most shareholders. Even though I would have preferred if they, the dividend was a little bit smaller and they used the proceeds instead of doing dividends, doing you know some kind of acquisitions without dilution, the stock would be a much better performer. But still, it works for them and they have proved it so far. And I'm happy you know, to own this company, decisive dividend. Free cash flow yield is 8.85%, pretty close to a 9% free cash flow yield, growing 47% free cash flow per share. I'm not sure if they can keep it up. Analysts are expecting 26% for 2024, 34% in 2025. But the honest truth is no one is really going to know the accuracy of these numbers because it will all depend on the acquisitions that this company does. If they do more acquisitions, the free cash flow per share is going to be higher growth. And if they do less, it's going to be lower, of course. But I would expect from 47%, even if they grow 15% or 20% free cash flow per share and a free cash flow yield of 9%, this is still very undervalued for me. And the mean free cash flow yield was 7.5% and now it's pretty close to 9%. So we could even have a potential multiple expansion. For me, DE, decisive dividend could go up another 30 or 40% just to get to fair value of 6 to 7% free cash flow yield going free cash flow per share 30 and 40%. So to me, the company is just extremely undervalued. I see around a 20% annual return going forward if they grow free cash flow per share 20-25%. And if we don't experience a multiple contraction, which I think we want, we could see around 20-22% annual return. And again, you will never find these stocks in the NASDAQ or the S&P. It's a little bit hard to find them, mainly in the TSX Venture and in UK. And if you're interested about more of these stocks, I have like three or four of them in my own portfolio. You could join my Discord. If you look down in the description, you could see the link. And maybe you consider watch the video and see if this is something for you. 
Now, the second stock that I talked about before, and I couldn't buy it because I don't have a you know money printer. I don't have unlimited amounts of money. I just couldn't buy it. I was 100% invested. And this is a stock called eBay. I talked about it in my last video. I think two undervalued stocks. I talked about eBay stock. I think one of them. Now, it made a massive move on earnings, sitting at 47 and, and 59 cents per share. It did hold the support from March 2020. It bottomed around October 2023, and, and it never touched it again. Now, sitting at 47 dollars dollars 58 cents per share in terms of ebay most of you know the company 8.18.6 billion gmv this is not a dying company they still have a lot of gmv going within the company but they just did not know how to monetize it they have 16 million enthusiastic buyers so people that use it often 16 million people and pretty close to 18.6 billion in gmv but the company has failed to monetize all the user base that they have. But this has been recently changing. And they have been incorporating some AI in the investments and in the company, what things they're trying to do. Maybe the CEO talked about AI a lot, and this is why the stock was up so much. No, but they did report good uh, numbers. But AI, now, for example, you could take a picture of an item you have, and AI will write the description for you. AI will put the pricing for you. AI will even remove the background for you to make it look professional. And you could sell your item, any item you have. AI will, ident will identify it. They will write the description. They will price it accordingly, remove the background, and you just list it. And, and Facebook market marketplace does not have this option yet and other platforms don't have this option and this is something that's so far differentiating ebay from different players and i appreciate the effort and the things they're trying to do to innovate they don't want to stay you know the same forever and i appreciate what they're doing i couldn't buy the stock i mean i didn't have any cash but it's been doing amazingly amazingly well and it's still undervalued they pretty much destroyed their own guidance 18.6 billion in gmv the highest was 18.3 eps dollar and seven cents versus the highest which was a dollar and five cents so they destroyed most of their guidance number and it's pretty amazing for a dying company like ebay people say it's dying it's not really dying and they recently started the whole thing was advertising kind of like amazon amazon's advertising business is is one of the most underrated parts of the business because a lot of the sellers they want their item to appear first or second on the page and just the retention is huge and the exposure is huge and it's the same thing with ebay sellers want their nike air force or whatever they want it to appear first or second and it's been growing over 20 percent year on year and this is a whole new kind of revenue stream that started not long ago and it has been growing very very rapidly and i'm very bullish on the advertising business of ebay Balance sheet in total is not bad. Net debt is 2.6 billion, you know, not bad at all. If you look at the free cash flow yield, this company is still trading at an 8.3% free cash flow yield. So you're getting around an 8% annual return if the company takes all the free cash flow and do buybacks. And the company does, you know, a lot of buybacks. You can see the shares outstanding from 1.1 billion to 533 million. They bought 4% of the market cap of shares outstanding in 2023. They bought like 15% in 2022 and at 16% in 2020. So if the stock is extremely undervalued, you bet eBay is gonna use the free cash flow to do buybacks and do uh, dividends. And for me personally, the way I look at it, I, I don't really see any major growth for something like eBay. But if I look at something like the EPS estimates from the analyst, and we could you know, look at it right now, I didn't prepare it for the video, you know, which is fine. And we could look at the analyst estimates for eBay. They have for, this is fiscal year, so they have for 2025, in terms of gap numbers, around 5.4%. 10% for 2026, 4% for 2027, and 6.5% and for 2028. So for me personally, I wouldn't bet on something more than a 4% EPS growth unless, EP, unless eBay keeps surprising on that. But I'm seeing a 4% EPS growth. I'm seeing an 8.3% free cash flow yield, which could have a multiple expansion. It could go back to the mean of around 7%. So in total, if we have an 8% free cash flow yield, we have like 4 or 5% from EPS per share. This is something like 12 or 13% annual return turn on eBay without a multiple expansion. With a multiple expansion, you could get pretty close to a 15% on eBay or a double every five years, even though the stock has moved very, very much. And it's very hard to find these kind of value opportunities in the market. But I believe eBay is one of them. And I believe decisive dividend is one of them, even though it's sitting at 52 week high, it will most likely pull back a little bit. And I think that would be an amazing buying opportunity. But it's not financial advice. It's just my opinion on these two stocks. And I hope you enjoyed the video. So if you did, please press the like button and maybe consider subscribing. So I hope to see you in another one.